Time now for Sewing Perfect with Debbie, exclusively on Hometown TV. Hi, I'm Debbie Hunter down here at Sew Perfect Studios and you're watching Sewing Perfect with Debbie. This week, I'm going to teach you how to make pillows. Pillows are so easy to make. And if you go to buy these custom pillows like these right here, you're going to pay $50, $7,500 a piece. These aren't just little, you know, just little throwaway pillows that you get out at Walmart. These are nice custom made pillows. And I'm going to teach you how to make these. And this way you're going to save yourself just with these two pillows here. You're going to save yourself a couple hundred bucks. Now, if you've been watching my shows, which I'm sure you have, you remember the stockings and how we did that using the scrap pieces of material and stuff like that to make the stockings. Well, this is the exact same principle, okay? You've got all these different fabrics of upholstery fabric. This is all leftover material. Remember, I keep saying, save your fabric. Don't throw anything away. You see, this is just another little piece of fabric. Okay, so what we're going to do with this upholstery fabric and drapery, say you had a chair recovered, and I always give back the fabric. You know, I give it back to the people so that they can make a pillow or something like that. Or whenever we do drapes or anything like that, I always give them back that scrap fabric. So this is what you do with all that little scrap fabrics that you've got laying around and you want something that's going to match the pretty drapes that you've had made or you want it to match the, uh, the couch that you had covered or the chair or ottoman or whatever. Okay, so now if you don't have fabric laying around that's leftovers from job, I'll tell you a little secret where you can get free pieces of fabric. And what you do, especially around here where we have England's and all the different, uh, what is it, Brandeis or whatever, I don't know. But all the different furniture manufacturers that are right over there in Tazewell, okay. They have hundreds of pieces of just sample fabric where if you're wanting to go and order a sofa or something like that and you would, you know, having it custom made, you would pick out go through their little books that they have just like this of fabrics and you just go through and just look and look and look and they like I said they have hundreds of it well every season they throw this away okay so once a year if you like to dumpster dive or box dive or whatever like I do <laughs> you can go to these furniture places and pick through their scrap fabric and their throwaway fabric or if you go to an actual furniture store you know like Brumbox or one of the 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 better ones where you can buy custom fabrics and stuff from they'll have these too and they throw them away also so that's a great way to get free fabric and it's good fabric it's good furniture quality nice strong beautiful it's all in the current styles you know it's just they just change it out season to season to season and a lot of times they'll just give it to you because they don't want to have to pay to have it hauled off so you get to go through all that fabric pick out the ones that you like the best keep it throw it in a box i've got a big old box sitting over there that's just full of all this scrap fabric that the uh, furniture shop threw away and I dumpster dived and got it. <laughs> but you know me, like I said, I, I hoard everything. So, But anyways, we can make such pretty things out of this fabric. I just hate to have it thrown away. And like the stockings, we made those cute stockings out of just leftover fabric. And we're going to do these beautiful custom pillows the same way. So the fabric itself was free. So I don't have any money in the fabric. And we're going to do the exact same thing like we did the stockings. You cut out one piece of just cotton or whatever you've got lying around. This is not going to be seen. And you cut it out the size of your pillow. Now we're going to make these. These are for like what goes in the small of your back when you're sitting on the sofa or the chair or something. And that's what we're going to make. We're just going to make the little back pillows. So I just cut my 
just plain old piece of fabric. And then I got me some pieces that I'm just going to kind of line up and see how I want to arrange it, see how pretty I want to make it. You know, it's basically the same thing that you did with the stockings. You're just going to line it up, see what colors you want, what will go together, um, what won't go together, what you think, ah, uh, I kind of like that, but I kind of like this better, and you like this, you know, putting it this way, and then putting it this way, and don't worry about what's falling off, because you're going to cut that off just like we did the stocking, okay? Now I've got some already laid out and we're going to go over to the sewing machine and just have a little refresher course of how to sew it together. Okay, I'll meet you at the machine. Okay, so we are over here at the sewing machine and there's my square. Like I was saying, you're just going to cut, cut out your white square size of the pillow that you want to make and you can do that any size you want like I always stress you are making this for you you can make the if you want this to be a big old two foot by two foot pillar then you make yourself a big old two foot by two foot pillar i'm just making the smaller ones it's easier on the show it's easier to stuff and everything so i just i like the small ones but you do it whatever size you want to do it um, and you can see i've already started this one i've got three pieces on here already and I'm using this here. This was samples of, looks like a tree and a palm tree design. So I'm using all four pieces that came through that sample book, you know, where if you wanted to buy this certain couch and you wanted this fabric, you can pick the different color. So I got me four pieces that didn't cost me a penny. So we're going to do just like we did with the um, with the stockings. We're going to just sew it on there and then fold it over and press it. It's the exact same thing and I'm going to go ahead and do this one. This is the last piece for this pillow. And we're just going to do that straight line sewing. That's what all of this is. It's all straight line sewing. Nothing fancy. Even though when it's all said and done, it's going to look all fancy and people are going to think you've spent a fortune on custom pillows. And then you get to just laugh and go, ah, oh, I made those. And I learned by watching Debbie. <laughs> So you see, we just sewed it straight down and now I'm gonna press it over. Now on some of the upholstery fabric, you do have to watch when you're pressing and you want to use a pressing cloth, which is just a flat piece of cotton. You can use t-shirt material, sheet material, whatever you want to use to use as a pressing cloth. And what that does is because some of the upholstery material, if you put the iron to it, you'll get this, uh, it's kind of like a shiny thing that'll happen to it and you don't want that. So put the pressing cloth to it and then press it over top of it. And this way you don't have to worry about scorching your fabric or getting that, like I said, that shiny, you know, from the iron on it. And you do that whenever you're ironing your clothes at home too. So just kind of keep that in mind. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut all this extra fabric that we had off. And since I've got it all pressed out, I'm just going to go through and pin couple pieces so that I know exactly where I'm going to cut and where it's going to lay to make sure it's going to lay nice and flat. And then I'm just going to flip it over and see this is the size of our pillow. 
so I'm just going to cut off right along the outside edge of my pillow form or just the, the straight you know pillow size that you're wanting you know just like we did with the stocking we're just cutting it all the way around And we'll save that for another project later on because you know me I don't throw anything away <laughs> so there's our front of our pillow now you can leave it like this or you can get fancy like I did with those just like we did with the uh, with the stockings we can put the trim on it which is what I'm gonna do because I just think it's really pretty if it has you know some trim on it makes it makes it look more expensive than what it actually is and this way you know when people look at it they'll they'll really think you paid a big old bunch for it and you'll just laugh and know that you didn't you might even get people to want to make want you to make them some so we're going to put those two there and then I actually run on run across this on eBay and just thought it was so pretty it just looks like a little flower and little scallops on it and I'm gonna put that right across there and since I want this to be under that say that will trim it that tells me that I need to put this piece on first okay so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and put that on just like we did the the stockings the exact same way and I'm already threaded up in brown because I knew I was going to use this here brown so And this just sews straight on. Make sure you use a really good strong needle because you are going through um, two layers of upholstery material plus this here trim plus your cotton that is your backing. So make sure you use a good needle. And I showed you the kind last time to get. And this is just covering up that seam. You don't have to go fast. Don't worry about your speed. You want to worry more about precision on this. And just go right up to the seam. And back it back up. And that puts that piece on and now we want to just trim it because we know we're putting the other gimp right over top of it see just like that And you're going to do the exact same thing again. Just make sure that you're covering this here edge that you cut off of. See, I'm putting it right over top of that.
You can see there. Then we're going to do the same thing on this side. making sure that we cover that edge of that other trim. Now we're going to press it down again. Make sure you always use your pressing cloth. Especially going across the trim and stuff, you definitely want to use your pressing cloth. Okay, so now we're all pressed and I've got all my trim and these this pretty little trim there and that trim there and like those other pillows over there they have this beautiful long bullion fringe is what this here is called now this fringe is quite expensive <laughs> that's why it's only on the sides of those pillows and that's why I'm only going to put it on the sides of these. Because um, it will run you 12, anywhere between 12 and $20 a yard. And that's, you know, a yard is 36 inches. So you don't want to overflow something with this type of fringe. Because, well, this size pillow, okay, if you was to take and put that fringe all the way around it, it's just not going to look right and you're going to have a lot of money in it when you didn't need to. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put it on each end like I did those. That gives you the look of having it high end, uh, very lottie dotty, you know, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but it gives you that look without having the cost of that look. So. And you know me, I'm all about cheap. I want it cheap. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're just going to lay out each, each side. And we're just going to have enough to go down each side. So now you put about, let's see, the fabric was free. The gimp was maybe a dollar's worth if that much because remember a lot of this we had left over from our stockings but if you had to go buy it you've got about a dollar's worth of the gimp so so far you've got just a couple dollars in the pillow and that's what we're going to have with this so your that's going to be your biggest expense is whatever kind of trim that you want to put on the side of your pillow so this pillow we might have uh, 10 bucks total in it stuffing and all by the time we get all done so you might have ten dollars in the pillow that you would buy if you went to a, a big old shop you would pay a hundred dollars for this pillow so just kind of keep that in mind when you're looking at trims and thinking of what to put on it just kind of keep that in mind too. So, anytime that you're going to put trim or fringe or anything like that, even if you're just doing a cording going all the way around, you want to put it on the front of your pillow. Okay? <coughs> and what you're going to do is 
this is your sewing um, your seam allowance this tells you where you're gonna sew so you'll put this on the very edge of your pillow okay and when you sew it you're gonna sew right up here okay So we're just going to pin it in place because you don't want it moving around on you. And this this type of fringe is really kind of, uh, it's very silky and shiny and it will move on you if you're not careful. So you definitely do want to go ahead and pin it. Okay, so now we're going to sew this beautiful fringe onto the front of our pillow and remember I told you that's your seam allowance so you want to just follow this it's a um, it's a stitch that the factory puts in and it keeps all this together for you so you're not having to put each fringe on individually which is really nice of them you know I appreciate that so we're going to use that one seam line as our guide on sewing this on because I know if I sew right over top of that seam line once it's sewn on and it's turned right side out you won't see this here okay see how that looks once it's sewn on so that's what we're going to do we're going to stay on that inside seam line We've got a really good strong needle. This is why you want to invest in really good strong needles. And remember, we pinned everything, and this is why. You see how this is starting to push this away? That's why we pinned it. This way, where it's pinned, will stop it from pushing forward, and it'll keep this from spreading apart as you're sewing and it'll keep it looking nice and full and pretty. Okay, so, and I did sew right over top of the, the pin, which is okay, because I've got a really good strong needle. And I've got glasses on, so if I break the needle and it pops up, it'll hit my glasses. So I can kind of do that, and I'm not really worried that much, but see how that's moving on me? that's why you have that pin this is really silky and it'll just push and move on you so that pin just keeps it from going too far so you just staying right on that line and you can see I'm not going fast either you don't have to you know, like I always say, you don't have to be a speed demon on this. You just have to do it nice. Go take your time. Make sure you're precise with it. And down here at the end, I'm pushing that just to make sure that it all stays up under there. And I back it up really good. So... I can take all my pins out now and see all my fringe is on there so when that gets sewed to the back piece and turned around that's what it's going to look like see okay now the next step now that we've got everything that we're going to put on the front this is how I want my pillow to look when it's all done okay I've got my fringe down the side I've got all my the pretty little trims and I've got my fabric now I need a back now back can be anything that you want it to be any old kind of fabric that you've got laying around you can use for a back I like to color coordinate the back with whatever I've got going on in the front in this case I'm going to use a brown Okay, so this is what I'm going to use for the backing. And this is just a nice, uh, it's almost like a corduroy. It's just brown. It's a neutral. So it's not going to, it's not going to take away from the front. And like I said, it's going on the back. 
nobody really sees the backs of your pillow unless they're just looking at it and uh, but you still want to kind of keep it nice since you did go through all this trouble of making the front really pretty you do want to put something on the back that is gonna you know kind of go with it and in, like I said in this case I'm just going to use this here brown yes you know, it's, it's kind of a fuzzy fabric now in sewing you always want to put front to front so what we're going to do is we know this is the front of our pillow and this is the front of my back fabric you can see this is the wrong side of the fabric this is the right side so we're going to put the right side of the fabric to the right side you know the front of my pillow we're just going to lay it lay it right on top of it just like that and we're going to go around and we're going to pin it you know this is where you get into i always say pin 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 if you got to put a pin every two inches put a pin every two inches if you got to do it every inch put it every inch throw the pins to it it's not going to hurt nothing to have extra pins you know it don't hurt my feelings to pin anything yeah I say pin it pin it pin it pin it go all the way around tuck your fringe all that is all supposed to be on the inside of this here pillow because what we're going to do is we're going to sew all the way around the square except for about six inches that we're going to leave open so that we can turn it right side out and stuff it and then we'll sew it sew it up so you're going to pin it all the way around and that's what I'm doing here I'm just tucking all that fringe in there don't worry if it see how this here is kind of bumpy and it looks like it's going to mess up it's not going to mess up you need you've got extra stuff in there so this bumpiness doesn't matter because by the time you turn it right side out and go to stuff it you don't see any of that little extra bumpy or nothing So I'm just going to pin all the way around. And that's what I'm doing here. So I've got it pinned all the way around and I'm ready to sew it again. <coughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark me a six inch spot. I want to make sure I'm at the bottom. Yeah. You always want that to be on the bottom of the pillow. So if you've got a specific pattern like this and had a pattern of little trees and they were all going in this direction so when this pillow is sitting up it's going to be sitting like this you always want your opening to be at the bottom because that's how your pillow is going to sit you know and then when you sew that together you don't see it so that's one thing to kind of keep in mind whenever you're you're fixing to sew around it leave your opening at the bottom of your pillow and now we're just ready to sew around it and what we're going to do this is another reason why i like to use a lighter color for the backing on the front of the pillow is i can see where my other seams were so i know when i'm sewing around this pillow i know i have to go right over top of this seam right here that puts me exactly where that fringe starts and stops so 
we're gonna go ahead and I'm making sure all my little fringe and everything is pushed up in there and I'm gonna take my about a half inch seam allowance start sewing back it up very important to back tack where you're starting and stopping as far as going around this pillow because if you don't when you turn it right side out and you go to stuff it all that stitching will come apart and then you'll just get all mad and start fussing and you'll throw it in the corner and never look at it again we don't want that to happen so I'm going right you can see I went right to that other seam where I put that other fringe on and I'm just going to sew right over top of that seam. And I've got a really good strong needle in there so I'm not worried about any of it breaking or nothing like that. Now I've come to the corner and I'm going to sew till it looks like it's about a half of an inch. Raise my foot, turn it. I'm going to make sure that all my fringe is tucked up in there. That's what you want to do. Make sure all that fringe is all getting tucked up in there. And then I'm just going to sew all the way down this top line. And I'm actually giving this just a little bit of a tug because where there is so much bulk up under there, that just kind of keeps it good and smooth while you're sewing it. I'm not doing a, I'm not pulling, pulling, just a little bit of a tug to keep it good and taut. Then here's another corner. And I sewed right up to where I put that trim on. I'm just making sure everything is lining up. And I'm just staying right on that existing line that I've already sewed on. Okay, and now we're back down at the bottom, okay, and there's my six inch mark is right here at this here pin, so I'm just going to go all the way down, let's see, I'm going to make sure that trim is up under there, so I'm going to sew it until I hit that six inch mark. And then I'm gonna back back it up again. Make sure you set those stitches. Otherwise, like I said, you'll be so mad and frustrated and aggravated and we don't want that. We want happy sewers. Okay. Now I'm just gonna take all my pins out. And then I'm gonna show you a little trick before you turn it. And that way when you go to stuff, the corners and turn it you're gonna take and on the this is the corners here and when you go to turn this around this gets really really bulky so you're gonna just cut that little corner piece off and what that does is it keeps it from being way too bulky in that corner say and allows for when this gets turned right side out see this will fold to that and that will fold to that and that takes that bulkiness away from that corner so you're just going up to your corner seam don't cut across that corner seam you definitely don't want to do that otherwise you're gonna to have to sew it back together again but you're just going to cut up to that seam see i've left it looks like about an eighth of an inch away and that's what you want to do 
And then right here is where you can go through and trim off any extra trims, you know, that's sticking out. Okay, now we're going to flop it right side out. That's the fun part. What I usually do, especially when I've got fringe on it, is I just grab a hold of the fringe and I pull it out. <laughs> so, that's what makes it kind of fun. You can just grab it and that'll pull that corner right on out. And same thing here, see? I just grab a hold of that fringe and pull that corner right on out. Okay. <coughs> Got a couple extra little pins in there. Now, see, there's our pillow. Isn't that pretty? Now all we got to do is stuff it and then close it. And that's what I'm fixing to do right now. Okay, so I'm stuffing the pillow and all I'm using is this, it's a really good premium polyester fiber field. Um, you can use straight cotton if you want to. I prefer this on pillows because you can get it really good and fluffy and it just it holds its shape and everything so I just buy it by the big old box full and I you can get it out at Walmart or any of your sewing shops any old place has it and what you want to do is when you stuff your pillow is you want to push that stuffing all the way up into the corners first and then you'll do these outside edges, okay? Just take your stuff and, you know, pull it apart like that, kind of get it fluffy. Because you don't want a bunch of uh, bumps and stuff, because that's what's going to really kind of make your pillow look homemade. If you've got a bunch of bumps and stuff like that, you want to keep it good and smooth. So, even if you're using leftovers from something else that's fine just make sure that you do just like I'm doing here pull it apart kind of fluff it back up and you don't even have to go with big old pieces you can just just put the smaller pieces in at a time and as you're putting it in there what I'm doing is I'm putting it in there with my hand and then I'm using my hand to kind of spread it apart a little bit and that kind of helps keep it good and smooth so you don't get all those bumps and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna finish stuffing all this, making sure my corners are really good and stuffed. And see, I'm just using little pieces here. And I'm pushing it all the way up in them corners. That's what you wanna do. You wanna make sure that your corners are stuffed really good. Put it in there until it's as thick as you want it to be. If you want a soft pillow, then don't put as much in. If you want a really hard pillow, put a lot in. You know, so it's all up to you. Now this feels pretty good. It's bouncy. All the stuff feels pretty smooth on it. Okay. That looks like I need to press, push some of that on it out there. Fill in that little spot. So, and that's what you do. You're just kind of checking and seeing where you might need to push some more stuffings in. Okay, now, in the back looks like it's good and smooth too. Now, to close this, it's very simple to close these. You do it by hand or by machine, either one. I'm going to show you by hand because I just think it looks better when it's closed by hand. And this is the same way that you're going to close just any anything that you might make like this that gets stuffed, like little pet animals and stuff, you know, the little stuffed animals. You're going to do it all the same way. What you're going to do is, you know, make sure your stuffing is pushed down. That's going to go, and I'll just kind of show you, you're going to push that 
all the way over okay you don't have to fold it in or anything like that you're going to take your your seam allowance is what i'm doing as i'm pushing it that away okay now this here bottom piece i'm just going to do a little fold here okay and i'm going to set it right over top of that one okay and i'm going to pin it you definitely want to pin this you don't want to be a sewing on this and it not be pinned and then you find out you didn't pull enough over or you didn't fold it enough and see that's got that nice fold on it that's what you want and you're gonna pin it see same thing here you want to fold that over push that cotton down in there and put it right over top of your other piece okay and pin it so all of your teddy bears whatever you're making pillows everything you close it all the exact same way okay now you see how that looks this piece is straight up under there okay you do that so that the cotton and stuff if you had both pieces some people will take these and put both pieces that way well then you run a risk of the cotton coming through the seam okay as if you put one piece under and then the other piece over top of it your cotton's not going to come through and that's what you want okay now what you want to do is you want to just get a needle and thread let's see let's move that down i want to make sure it's good and straight that's why you pin it first you want to make sure it's good and straight okay now you want a needle and thread the same color as this here backing here is brown so i'm going to use brown okay brown thread and i'm i'm all pinned where i want to be now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my thread and go in that seam. See how I just went right in that seam. And I'm going to come out just a little bit past that seam. And the reason I'm doing that is it's going to take my knot and bring it way up in there. And that's what you want. You want your knot way up in there. You don't want the knot to show. So, I'm going to just go straight into both pieces of fabric. Use my, my finger as kind of a little guide kind of thing. And I'm going to come right back out on my fold. Okay. So... Let's see. I'm trying to figure out how to put this so that you can see it really good. Okay. So what you're wanting, okay, what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to bring that needle right out in that fold. See how the fold is right here? That's where you want to bring that needle out. Okay, so I'm right in that fold. Okay. Now I'm going to go down into the top fabric and just bring it right on straight back up you can kind of see it's a little tricky now since i'm see i only pulled up on that back fabric so now i'm going to go right back right in that fold you see there that's how you sew that without the thread being seen so you're right in that fold of that fabric and you're going to go right on back down 
Bring it right on back up. See? You don't even see the thread here. So you're going to go right back in that fold. And you're only going to go, see here, I'm just going a little bit. I'm not going a lot. You don't have to be in a big old hurry when you're doing this. You know, because you want it to look really nice. You don't want to be able to see the, uh, the thread. So see, I'm going in that, the orange, the bottom fabric. And you can see there, I just did a, a little bit. Okay. And now I'm going in that fold of my top fabric. I think they they might actually call this a ladder stitch or something like that. I'm not really sure what they call it. I just call it a closing stitch or a way to sew up the pillow without your thread being seen. Now see, just right on back down in there. See, just that little bit. And then in that fold. See? And it's just that little bit. Yeah, that's why I said just take your time. You're not in a big old rush. You know, there's no need in... You've gone through, you know, making this really pretty. There's no sense in rushing this part. But that's all you do. That's how easy that is. See, and you're just, like I said, you're just taking little stitches. And that's how you close a pillow. Okay, so there's our pillow. Isn't it super cute? And that's what I say. I mean, these go, I have seen these in specialty shops for $100. And we made this, even using the bullion fringe, we might have $10 in this pillow. And what, about 30 minutes of time? Nothing, nothing really. So there you go. That's how you make fancy pillows. Um, you know, you've saved yourself, like I said, you saved yourself a couple hundred bucks by making it yourself. You can do any colors you want to do. You can do any kind of trims you want to do on it. You can even just take these if you don't want done like this. You just take two square pieces of fabric, put it front to front, sew straight around it, leave you an opening, turn it right side out stuff it and you can just make yourself a plain pillow. I know a lot of people that do that. Um, you can use the same principle on how you make a pillow on using a, your uh, child's old t-shirts and stuff. If you wanted to make a t-shirt pillow like their uh, ball game pillow and stuff like that, you know, their ball game t-shirt and their jerseys and stuff, turn it into pillows and it's something that you can have, you know, forever basically now that you know the basics of making a pillow and you know how to make it a little bit fancier too trim is done the exact same way whether you're doing it all the way around or just on the two ends like what we did on these um you know it's very simple it's very simple to make save all the old fabrics that you got anytime you have curtains made or upholstery done make sure that you tell the people that you want your leftover fabric back and make yourself a couple throw pillows to go on your sofa or in your den or wherever you got the chair that you recovered think of it on your bed you know how expensive are all those fancy pillows that you put on your bed that just sits there and you just look at that's it you never use them your head never touches them because you paid so much for that pillow, you dare your husband to put his old nasty head on that pillow. So <laughs> now you've got some, doesn't cost you hardly nothing to make. Your husband will be happy because he can actually use it. <laughs> but there you go. And I hope you enjoyed the show this week. And, you know, it's like I always say, save all your scraps. I'll show you how to use up all of them. We're going to do 
some quilts using the same basic principle on doing quilts. Just think of how pretty a quilt would be if you got that as a square, that as a square, that as a square. You know, I mean, th it, the possibilities are endless. And it's, you know, like I said, it's virtually free. You know, we've got maybe $10 in this entire, and that's including the bullion fringe. So I hope you enjoyed the show this week. Save all your fabrics. You know, when you make some, bring them by. Let me see. And, uh, and that's it. And that's Sewing Perfect with Debbie. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Sewing Perfect with Debbie is filmed at Sew Perfect Studios, downtown Middlesboro. Join us each Thursday at 8 p.m. exclusively on Hometown TV 13.